Hi, I'm Tom, and today I'm going to show you how to install a new set of landing gear on a fifth wheel that has a generator installed up front. We're working on our 2010 Heartland Cyclone Model 3850 Toy Hauler fifth wheel. So unfortunately, if your landing gear breaks or something goes wrong with it on one of these units, you can't easily access the driver's side landing gear because generator box pretty much takes up the entire space in here. There's only two ways to get at it. You either have to remove the generator and the entire assembly or you have to be a skinny guy like me and climb up on top of here to access the landing gear. Now I have already clawed up in there and removed the old landing gear system that broke. Um, we had to lift jack up the the fifth wheel and get it to a high enough elevation that we could actually disconnect and drop the landing gear out the bottom. So <clears throat> we're going to start uh, working on this, getting the uh, getting the parts and pieces together, and uh, and we'll show you how to how to get it, get it replaced. Okay, so a couple weeks ago we were uh, raising our landing gear up after we got it on the truck, and uh, snap something went wrong. The foot fell off the bottom. Turns out that the drive shaft, the actual screw shaft inside the landing gear broke. Now you can usually repair these landing legs, however, since this unit has about a 3,000 pound tongue weight, I decided that I'd rather upgrade to a, a stronger unit. Um, the previous unit was a Venture unit that only had uh, a rating of about 2,000 pounds per leg. Uh, we've upgraded to a bulldog style unit that's got about a 5,000 pound per leg lift capacity. So um, what you need to know when you're actually selecting your landing gear is basically the dimension as to the stops that actually hold the landing gear legs in. Um, in a lot of times you'll see that they recommend that you have to have 17.5 inches between the two U-brackets that actually sit actually sit in around your um, your leg and hold it in place right here. Um, that's because a lot of times the U-brackets sit on the outside, one here and one here. However, in our case, with this Heartland unit, our U-brackets actually sit on the inside of the stop. So there's only like 13 inches or something in between here. The critical dimension is that you need to, you need to make sure that you've got the dimension from here to here that those brackets can sit against. So this Bulldog unit does have the exact same dimension, however it's not 17.5 inches between my U-brackets. It's 17.5 inches to the outside of these one inch spacers. So it's actually 15 and a half inches to the inside. Either way, this bracket is going to work out. The major difference between this bracket and the actual install is that it has a second bracket on the outside that has to slide into the U-joint. Because of this, you can't slide this up into the U-joints when you are installing it. So we're going to have to actually cut a slightly larger hole so that we can slide these new ones in on the outside and then place them into the U-joints the same way. So to actually install this unit, I'm going to go ahead and remove the cotter pin that holds the motor on and I'm going to remove the drop leg piece out of this so that we can install just the landing gear leg piece and then you put this in at, a, at an angle while you're still installing the unit and then place it into that U-joint. So we're going to go ahead and do that now. Okay, so you're going to want a headlight when you curl up in there. You're also going to want to have someone that's not claustrophobic because it's very tight. Okay, so once you get up in here, you'll realize it's uh, it's quite tight. Um, not a lot of room to work. Uh, once you get up in here, you'll realize that you'll need to remove um, the existing landing gear leg, which will sit approximately right here where this one is sitting currently. Uh, I've already removed it. You can see there's pretty much just two bolts that have to come out. Um, the problem I'm currently having is that 
This one I cannot slide in because it's got these additional tabs. The other one only had the tab on the back, so I can't slide it up. And the lower tab down here is hitting it and I can't get it in there. So what I'm gonna have to do is I'm gonna have to cut that hole on the bottom a little bit wider so that I can actually get this in. So that will be next. But as you can see, it's very tight. You'll have to remove the existing parts um, and or repair it in place if that's what you intend to do. Um, but uh, I've got yet to get these, uh, this motor and the wiring, uh, the existing wiring out. So next though, we're gonna cut that hole so that we can get this uh, installed. Okay, so now that we've determined that we need to cut the hole a little bit larger, I've got the, uh, I've got the lines drawn out as to where we're gonna cut. We're gonna go ahead and widen up this hole so that we can, uh, we can get the, the landing leg in this, uh, in this spot. Okay, so you can see we've got it all installed now. Um, had to cut the hole larger at the bottom here. Sorry for being so shaky. Um, had to cut the hole larger here at the bottom and also had to um, install the actual jack screw and the motor and the pin right there. Um, after, uh, while it was still at an angle up through the uh, through the hole, and then once we had that installed, we were able to slide it into the uh, into the U, U brackets. Um, one additional thing to point out is on these points right here, you might be able to see a little bit right there as some grinding. I actually had to grind off a little bit of the welds here and here to get this to slide in to have that uh, exact distance there. So anyway, we got it all installed on this side. Now it's just a matter of uh, wiring it up. Here was the original wire, um, the original lift uh, button, but we're not gonna use this point here um, because it's just too difficult to get at. We're gonna wire it to the other side and abandon that, uh, abandon that point. So anyway, um, on to the next one. So with the left leg, it's a lot easier to install because you don't have the generator involved. So we actually probably don't even have to take it apart. I did remove the motor and reconfigure it. Had to grind these points down like we did before so that we make sure it slides into the uh, the U-bolts. But we could probably just install it like this. Just like that. <clears throat> Next, install the remaining hardware and wire your new jacks per the supplied instructions. Our jacks only required rewiring because we changed from the original single motor jack shaft style to a new dual motor setup allowing for side to side leveling. Okay, so we finished the install of our new landing gear on our uh, fifth wheel here. This is a 2010 model cyclone toy hauler, about 40 feet, very large, with the generator up front. Um, if you have a generator, you can replace your landing gear without removing the generator, but it can be very difficult. A couple of last notes, uh, remember to install the drop leg when you put the foot in. We forgot to do that, had to dig a hole in the ground to actually get it in. Also remember to mark the landing gear legs at the maximum minimum points. Uh, most of these new models have a breaker that prevents damage, but it's best just not to test it out with the limits. So go ahead and do that and you should be good. Feel free to leave me a comment if you've got a question. Uh, I'll try to respond to you and see if I can help you out.